I try to put music not as like the center of of my identity and who I am, and I try to like put all these other things in, in with it, and kind of put music last or in the middle or something, so that all the awesome activities that you maybe do throughout your week funnel into what you write that next week or that next weekend, um, versus going to the same studio every week and recording the same stuff and never like changing your environment really. But if you're going out and you're fishing or you're like surfing or climbing or whatever, and then you get back and you use all that fun energy that you just collected from all your trips and you sit down and write a song, it's going to be so much more exciting than, you know, just sitting down and making your, I don't know, five hour day, like going to their studio to record a song when it's like, what have you soaked up since the last time you recorded? You know? I think I think we're probably good to go. I'm stoked that we we finally got to make I this know. happen. I know, dude. Yeah, it's I'm I am not easy to get a hold of, so I apologize. I'm like even dude, my you're all over the place. Like, I know, man. I'm also just not good at texting, I mean, so it doesn't doesn't help. <laughs> well, you're usually somewhere not in service, so right. That's uh, that's not a bad thing, you know. I know. Taking so thank you for thank you for pulling pulling through and. Yeah, have patience for me. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Um, absolutely. Just, dude. First off, congrats. You just released a new single. Um, loving the song so far, and it's you know, I you've been putting out a bunch of music this year, which has been mm -hmm. super great for quarantine and being being at home. But I understand you you recorded that or you wrote that like last winter, right? Is that when that first started? Thank you. Um, Canary Islands. Gosh, I wrote that one. I think I wrote that at the beginning of this winter here. So probably in like September, October. Okay. Um, once the winter started to get, you know, it was getting a little colder and it was like, man, I'm gonna miss this, these warm days, but yeah. Dude, that's awesome. I mean, how, how long have you been, been doing kind of this whole music deal? Uh, I've been writing music since I was 16 or so. Uh, played a lot of acoustic coffee house shows and blues shows. I'm from Memphis, so it was lots of like little DIY coffee house sort of deal you know but uh i think senior senior year of high school or once i went to college it was more like punk rock sort of like show shows and that sort of definitely transitioned me into doing what i do now and i don't know playing in a venue with loud noises yeah. and bright lights and that sort of thing so yeah it's Dude, been I'm a curious, wild ride like when when i'm trying to describe your music to people it's so hard because and first off, like with the name, like goth babe, people are just like, I even initially when I, my buddy showed me, I was like, what? Like goth babe, what is this? Uh -huh. And then he showed me and I was, it blew my mind. And I was like, this is so cool. <sighs> Obviously just became a huge fan after listening and hearing about your story and like what you're about and just how much, you know, you love the outdoors, mm -hmm. which was super relatable for me. But uh, when you're, when you're talking to people, you know, how do you kind of describe that? type of style of music for uh for someone who has never heard of it um yeah i just describe it as probably indie electronic pop music made from a tiny home or a, a truck just super simple don't try to like make it too elaborate or crazy um but i don't know man yeah it's it's a one-man show and whenever we play live we we bring all of our homies in and we make it a big elaborate ordeal but normally this the recording process is just me and my little house and got a keyboard and a computer and an amp and uh i don't know anything different so that's just kind of the way it's always been yeah keeping it simple man it's sometimes mm -hmm. the best way to do it you know definitely 100 percent. so dude walk me through kind of the you know like you growing up because you are now living um in portland right or somewhere mm -hmm. in oregon mm -hmm. understand uh, but you're originally from tennessee right mm -hmm. i am yeah, I'm from from, from Memphis. Uh, my dad lived in Chattanooga, um, and I grew up in Memphis and Chattanooga split with, between, between my parents, and uh, they ended up getting back together after like many years of divorce, which is crazy. But they're they now live in Chattanooga, Tennessee. But growing up in Chattanooga, it's I mean the mountains there are beautiful, and Memphis doesn't have a whole lot of that, but there's still some fun outdoor stuff there. So 
Uh, my dad runs a Methodist outdoor kids camp, like a summer camp you go to to like rock climb and fish and kayak and all that sort of stuff. So during the summers, I'd go there and stay with my dad, and uh, I was just sort of like the little runt that would run around, and uh, I don't know, director's kid, you know, would just run yeah. around the camp and enjoy whatever it had to offer that day. So that's definitely where all the outdoor stuff came from, um, and that's why right. there's such an abundance of it, and it's not just one thing, because um, when you go to summer camp, it was like you skate, you kayak, and you, you do, I don't know, you could go caving all in one week or something, so... I don't know. I guess that could be a good thing or a bad, probably bad for the wallet, but good for life experiences, you know? Yeah. The more you get into these outdoor activities, like I just recently went climbing for the first time and my uh -huh. buddies are trying to get me into it. And you just, dude, you realize how much money you have to spend. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to, but each thing is costs money, you know, oh, that sure. you get into, but there's so much fun and you, there's so much fulfillment that you get out of it. Definitely. Um, and yeah, especially you, dude, you do everything, surfing, snowboarding, you know, biking, you do it all. Not great at any of them, but good at all of them. You know, you're, you're never like fantastic at one of them. But uh, um, yeah, they say like, what's, what is it like the, the cost, the initial cost of whatever you get into, you double that in the lifetime of the sport. So like, let's say you buy that's like so a $6,000 motorcycle. You're like, oh, that's it. And then you got to, you know, do maintenance and get all the gear. And by the time you sell mm -hmm. it, you've spent another six grand, I'm sure. But <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, we always you always got to find ways, you know, to to get around the most expensive gear. You don't always need the That's most right. expensive gear. That's right. Which is which is kind of like, dude, your your studio setup at home and how mm -hmm. you I understand you kind of record your music, which is so unique. You know, the production quality first off is incredible. It sounds Thanks, great. Man. All the, all the songs, I'm a huge fan. But it, what amazes me more is the fact that you're doing all this, whether it's either out of your tiny home that you built or it's in the woods out of your truck or your van. Right. Uh, and that's just, that's crazy, man. Is that how you've kind of always done it? Um, no, uh, I've always recorded pretty unique in unique ways. Like when I lived in, in Tennessee, I recorded from a multi-track or a tape machine or reel to reel. I always made it like more difficult for myself. I don't know why, but I guess it paid off. <laughs> um, uh, and then, I don't know, I probably recorded with just these super simple, you know, keyboard, computer, interface, speakers, guitar for, I don't know, two more years until I did move into a truck. And then it was like, well, all this stuff fits in here. So maybe I just get rid of the amp and the guitar and I just have a keyboard and a little laptop and use my little like Bluetooth speaker as my studio speakers. And that ended up working great for years. Um, so, I mean, that's what, like, Weekend Friend and sometimes we're both recorded on little laptops and just, like, this tiny little keyboard here that's got, you know, I don't know how many keys that is, 25 keys. But, um, yeah, keep it simple and don't break the bank, and I'm sure it'll come around, you know. <laughs> totally, dude. So, you, you kind of, like you were saying, you grew up in Tennessee, and then mm. <clears throat> that's kind of where all the outdoor stuff started. When did you kind of, you know kind of get introduced to music or have even like an interest in maybe it's learning to play or just having an interest in pursuing something with it? Um, I was a junior in high school, maybe I was a sophomore in high school. Uh, and I just had some buddies of mine that would sit in weed circles and like drum circles and play music and hang out. And I felt pretty left out in that. So I was like, ah, I want to learn a couple, couple chords because they would all just listen to string cheese incident and like jam along or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I learned a few chords, but then that escalated, you know, and then I was like, I, I just, I get super hooked and I'm very enthusiastic on new things. So, you know, that, that turned into six months later, like playing in a coffee house. And then six months later I was, you know, headlining a coffee house or whatever. Um, so started out with guitar, more acoustic, bluesy, real singer songwriter stuff, how everyone kind of starts out, but then it just evolved over time from indie music punk music into alternative and it's sort of just more instrumentation into the electronic thing that it is now so that just took years of development and change mm -hmm. and scenery and life and interest and age so yeah, yeah i mean because you got to understand <clears throat> kind of the core it always goes back to that acoustic and and then understanding kind of music in general just like the theory of it and how to build a song mm -hmm. um i'm not at all near where you are in music i've just picked up a guitar like two years ago. Nice. Man. Um, that my buddy is has kind of been teaching me, but 
you know, as you get more into it, I'm sure you kind of, you can mess around and you get more creative mm -hmm. and you can obviously tell with your music, it's kind of adapted over time. Um, like even your, in some of your early songs I've heard like sunshine, which uh -huh. are more like Rocky, that like punk rock, like surfer rock. And uh -huh. then now it's kind of this more, there's a lot of synth uh -huh. and there's, you know, some piano and, um, yeah, I know. It's just cool to see that the style kind of evolve. Um, was it, was there anyone that, you know, had a, had a big inspiration on you for, for getting into music or anyone that you really listened to growing hmm. up? Um, Oh man. When I first got into music, I like loved John Butler trio and string cheese incident. And, uh, but I also love blues music. Like buddy guy was awesome. Muddy waters, all those like, you know, legendary blues guys. But, uh, I don't know, man. Yeah. Dr. Dog was always one of my favorite bands. I love Dr. Dog. And then Tame Impala, of course, is awesome. You know, who doesn't like mm -hmm. Tame Impala? So I could hear some Tame Impala inspo for sure. For sure. Yeah, man. He's, he's the, he's the man. <laughs> he's so good. Yeah. That's killer. So did you end up going to college then after you graduated or what did you do after high school? After high school, I went to Nashville and Middle Tennessee State University. Went there for like a semester. I would even count the semester as trying. Um, went for that first semester <laughs> and uh, just found myself in Nashville. I had a manager and was just tour like playing shows around Nashville and was planning tours and um, that sort of thing. So it did college did not last very long, but it did push me to get to Nashville and that pushed me to continue to do music and meet fellow musicians and um, yeah, yeah. And so you do you end up dropping out? I'm, yeah, yeah, like after yeah. your fir freshman year or something? Yeah. After that after that first semester, I say I technically dropped out, but we still paid for the second semester. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, just one year. And then I think I worked at a coffee shop or a coffee shop or burger shop or something like for another like six months. And we just hop on the road in my SUV with some homies and go play house shows for two months and tour and come back and play, you know, make some more money and do the same thing over again. So. That was, those were some fun times. That was awesome. Dude, that's, that's gotta be like, I mean, such a cool town to be involved in with how much music is going on For sure. in Nashville. Um, but also probably a lot of like competition if you're trying to kind of stand out, you know? Yeah. There, there's a lot of music in Nashville. There really is. Like even in the punk scene, there's like seven punk bands that, you know, play one bill or something. There's so many bands. Um, I can't say a lot of the Nashville musicians, forgive me national musicians if you hear this you're not the ones i'm talking about but it feels like they don't get out of nashville a whole lot and they'll just kind of hang around the nashville crowd so rather than like trying to get out and go play shows and play tours and whatnot they're generally staying in nashville and, and like want to play that venue or that venue and it's sort of all like centralized so that was the only negative is once you kind of get in the nashville crowd sometimes you can get stuck in that music scene so mm -hmm. It was healthy. And so after a year living there, I moved to New York for three months and that was not for me. As you can, every day yeah. I had off, I was Dude, like, I can't believe that after, yeah. you know, kind of knowing what you do, do in love now. It's like, you lived in New York. Tell yeah, me about man. that. Every, every, I feel like everybody in their twenties wants to move to New York at some point. But, uh, yeah, I moved there and worked as a, oh gosh, what was I like a, product merchandising, I guess is what you consider it for like a furniture store. And I would like take photos of furniture and design their website. Super weird job. But, uh, every day off I had, I'd try and learn, learn how to surf it on Rockaway there, like at the beach. So I was like, man, if I'm like leaving the city every day, I have off, I probably shouldn't be living here. So then I went back home and got in my little high school SUV that I still had and, uh, trekked my way out west to LA and lived out there for a little while. And, uh, continued it that was i moved there with the intention of like i'm gonna do music whether it makes it or not i'm just gonna like put everything i have into it walk dogs for wag to make extra cash and just record music <laughs> and that's what i did but yeah i mean super grateful dude for that's like, cool man yeah every little stage you have in life you're always looking back and you're like man i'm glad i did that <laughs> you know yeah everything kind of works its its way out you know or for works sure. itself out in some way mm -hmm. um and obviously you're able to tell like new york is not for you Right. But you tried, which is I cool. I tried. There you go, man. Mm -hmm. So I, I understand my, my buddy showed me, you used to be in a band called the Lagunas. Uh -huh. Is that right? Yeah. And that's, was that in LA then? Or was that 
pre LA. That was in high school. That was my senior year. Oh, that was high school. Yeah, that was like my post punk kind of like transitioning into more of a band thing. And it was called Gold Coast at first, and then we named it to Lagunas, and yeah, that was really fun. That was more like house shows with your skate friends, and everyone just has a good time on the weekend sort of band, but uh, really, really fun. That's sweet, man. So when you got to LA, were you, uh, you said you just brought your SUV out, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, were you, were you, did you get an apartment out there, or did you start kind of just traveling around? Yeah, I mean, I I rented out a little like garage unit that was like five by seven. I could like touch both the walls and I would sneak in there at night and I had a little cot and I would like, I was pretty much squatting and I had my little music studio in there and I would, I would like write music in there. And when I wasn't doing that, I'd put it in my SUV and, but it's really hard to make music in an SUV. Like when I got the truck, it was a lot easier, Mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, but just traveled around, surfed all the time and those were some fun times for sure. You know, you have like. $150 $150 tops in your bank account and you're like, well, <laughs> you know, like cliff let's, bars. Let's see what happens this days. week. Yeah. <laughs> but, Dude, I, I love that. It's just like the, the starving artist, you know, I feel like uh, everyone kind of goes through that stage at some point, for sure. especially a lot of people that go to LA and um, it's so cool to hear about people who can see some success and kind of get out of that, you know, right? because as you know, takes, I'm sure a lot and a lot of, you know, hard work and just putting your head down and seeing what comes of it. Yeah, man. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it was, I mean, I remember like wanting to drop out of college that first semester and talking to my counselor or something there at college and being like, I think I'm going to go live in my car in LA because I've been thinking about it for a (laughs) while and uh, like a whole year or two prior. And she was like, I can't tell you how many times I've had students of mine drop out, go live in their car and end up back here two semesters later or something like (laughs) I don't know. And I was like, damn it, that's probably true. But super <laughs> glad. I think she also viewed view, living in your car as like a really negative thing. Like, oh, that's rock bottom. Mm-hmm. But I was like, I don't know, a high for sure for me. Those were good times. Yeah. And then that, like that transitioned into <clears throat> you getting a truck. And because when I first heard you, you started, you were doing, you had like a truck camper that you were making music out of, right? Did mm-hmm. that come, you know, maybe once you saved up some money, you're able to kind of move or I guess, you know, improve to getting a truck? Yeah, so I saved up some money, was ready to get out of that thing and that little SUV. So I bought like, I traded that truck for, or I traded that SUV for the truck plus like $2,000 cash or something and got this <laughs> truck and camper set up and then renovated the camper out and uh, put 100,000 miles on that thing over the course of like two more years or something. And it was, it was awesome. Moved, I obviously moved my way up north and kind of got out of the SoCal crowdedness, which was really, really helpful. Um, Mm -hmm. Picked up a dog dog along the way. And yeah, it's been, it's been great. I feel like I just got a new camper too, and a new truck. And it's like, it's so, it's like, it's amazing how, how like fancy and things have come, you know, but it's so funny. Like, look at the picture of the truck camper I came with and the one I have now. I'm like, oh no, like, what have I become? I'm like, (laughs) I don't know, my worst nightmare, but <laughs> yeah, still, still like, I was really fun. living out of that. Yeah, yeah, I know. And the aesthetics are all there with the old truck, but man, the comforts of the new ones. Woo. Nice. Oh yeah. Can't beat that. Can't beat it. So dude, the one of the things that, you know, I've really like, or I've kind of gravitated towards your music is just, I'm, I'm always inspired by people who kind of blaze their own trail and kind of go against the grain, you know, go against the norm. And, you know, it seems like what you've done in your, your path has been exactly that. And uh, just tell me about, you know, how kind of stepping away from the typical route of music and kind of being in the outdoors and being in the woods and going on, you know, taking your truck camper to these really incredible places, um, how that has kind of impacted the music that you've made and the the life that you've kind of chose to, to go about? Yeah, I think, um, I'm going to turn my screen brightness up. There we go. Um, I think that, I think that it's, uh, I don't know, man. I think that all the outdoor stuff that I do, I I definitely, okay, I'm going to try and construct a good sentence and not hop around a bunch here. Uh, Um, 
I try to put music not as like the center of of my identity and who I am, and I try to like put all these other things in, in with it, and kind of put music last or in the middle or something, so that all the awesome activities that you maybe do throughout your week funnel into what you write that next week or that next weekend, um, versus going to the same studio every week and recording the same stuff and never like changing your environment really. Um, but if you're going out and you're fishing or you're like surfing or climbing or whatever and then you get back and you use all that fun energy that you just collected from all your trips and you sit down and write a song it's going to be so much more exciting than you know just sitting down and making your i don't know five hour day like going to their studio to record a song when it's like what have you soaked up since the last time you recorded you know so Mm -hmm. i don't know i just like to be a sponge with all these activities and then when you sit down to write i just kind of release all of it and hopefully a lot of it comes out of the music yeah Dude, absolutely. Because like you're saying, I think people sit down and try to write about life or try to write about certain things mm-hmm. or experiences. Maybe they haven't even lived yet. Mm-hmm. And with with yours, it's you're going out and, uh, you know, I would have noticed too, I don't know if this is intentional, but how you release your music, uh, it seems like they're in smaller EPs, mm-hmm. uh, you know, two to four songs opposed to maybe a full length album. Mm-hmm. Um, tell me kind of the thought process behind that and if that was intentional or why uh why you kind of chose to do that um i think that's honestly because i think because the music industry nowadays does not it's just not the way it used to be it's not like release a record go on tour two years later release another record i think Mm -hmm. that uh with spotify and the way that it works and the way that everyone's brain works right now with needing constant stimulation and there's so much happening on our phones that you got to be an artist that's constantly like popping up on people's screens you know um so I think, I just think that if you released a full 12 song record and there was awesome songs in there, maybe only a couple of them would have gotten heard, but I think that releasing them in smaller chunks, I think the really good ones, in my opinion, like get the attention they might deserve or the attention I might want for them rather than just kind of sneaking them into a full length record. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I don't, I don't like the way that times have ended up playing out, you know, like it'd be so cool to have a vinyl every two years and, and celebrate the mm-hmm. record and go on tour and stuff. But I just don't think it, things work that way, unfortunately anymore. I wish that wasn't true, yeah. but you know, no, absolutely. That's dude. That's a cool way to, to think about it, especially like you're saying how people interact with content nowadays, especially Spotify or just music in general. Mm-hmm. But it, it seems like with each of your EPs that you come out with, they kind of have their own feel and their mm-hmm. own, you know, taste in a way. For sure. And, uh, you know, each one is like named after usually a location. Or do you, do you see that, you know, each one kind of has a different taste based on where you record it from or based on the location you've been? Um, yeah, I think, I don't know that it's as particular as like I recorded the song in this location and this is where my mind's really at. I think it's more like we just need ideas and um, all these places I love to spend my time. So we just kind of have been picking them out of the box, you know, like, ooh, this mm-hmm. one could be called Mount Hood because I don't know, it's winter time and I've been spending more time there, that sort of thing. So, but yeah, yeah. I don't know that the season, we like to be with the seasons too. I'm saying we as in like me and my management, my team. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, releasing a, a, an EP in the in January, February and making the cover have snow on it or something like that. So I don't know. It's worked, it's worked so far and it's kind of exciting. So I think that's why we continue to do it. I mean, dude, it's kind of like YouTube nowadays, you know, opposed to like a a traditional film, which you see in like the theaters Mm -hmm. where, you know, YouTube, you're constantly uploading and because you want people to, and they're shorter videos, you want people uh, to be able to see and keep it, keep it updated because their attention span. um, It's shortening, man. Scary. Yeah. It's crazy. I wish it wasn't. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's it's cool how that's really similar to kind of how your approach to music right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, got to keep up, man. There's a lot of competition. <laughs> yeah, dude. You know? But dude, tell me about uh, tell me about the tiny home. That how did that yeah, man. idea come about? And tell, yeah. for people who don't know, kind of give a little background on on where you are. Yeah, so the tiny home is uh, I built this last winter. Worst time to build something in Pacific Pacific Northwest, but I built it out here and um, it's a little dirty right now. But yeah, I don't know. I lived in the truck for so so long. I think I was ready for a full size kitchen and a, a 
you know, wood burning stove and I've got like a bed up full size bed up there, which is really nice. Um, oh, sweet. a shower, like a sink, all these things that I just didn't have for so long. Um, a fridge. I don't know. Everything you have in a house that you just don't even think about, I I didn't have for like two years, maybe three years. So I was so stoked to, you know, take a shower when I wanted to. And um, I have like a trailer out on the other side of the property. And in there I have like a little washer and dryer for like real small loads. So I don't smell like a kindergartner anymore, which is really nice. <laughs> but uh, right. <laughs> yeah, man, the tiny home has been great. I bought it as a shell. So I bought it like with with just it was just a trailer with this home frame on it and insulation and so i did a lot of work on the outside made it bigger on the outside kind of pushed down a whole wall and pushed it out three more feet three feet's a lot for a tiny house too that's like a whole nother yeah, bedroom oh my or gosh. something um yeah and then just like renovated the whole the whole thing inside so it took probably five or six months and it was awesome super therapeutic and I definitely didn't get a whole lot of music writing time in. And as I was building this, the camper I was living in was just like crumbling, like black mold <laughs> and stuff. And so like I didn't want to spend any time in there. I actually got COVID from my February tour, like before it really hit hit the States big. Um, That's crazy. And I spent it in my little camper. It was like drafty and had mold in it. And I was like, it's not oh. good, man. <laughs> Dude, so that's miserable. Yeah. If I get sick again or get COVID again, I'll definitely like have a solid space to be sick. So, yeah. Well, dude, that's, I mean, I know with like the bus that we've been working on that I think I've told you about, like, but like you're saying, three feet is just makes yeah. a huge difference. Yeah. How is that? <laughs> and, uh, it's, it's good, man. Um, we, it's, it's like, it's such an old bus right now. And so it's super slow and like unreliable, but we've, Obviously, we've been able to take it to Montana and around Montana, which has been really cool. And uh, yeah, kind of trying to plan our our next trip and everything, and what we want to do with the bus exactly, hey, man. and uh, just like build out and everything. So, but I think it's really cool that you build out your whole thing yourself. I mean, we're we're doing it. Our, our buddy Adam's doing it, but you know, the fact that you actually crafted everything inside, YouTube, man. YouTube, <laughs> YouTube, baby. Baby way, YouTube University. Well, that's cool, yeah. man. Well, take take the take the engine out and put a Cummins or a Power Stroke in, motor in it or something. And is it like the motor itself falling apart? Or is it like all the components? Yeah, there's something with the engine right now that is it's because we have it at a storage unit just mm -hmm. since like since like August. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we we got to fix something with the engine or mm -hmm. get a new bus. So we're kind of trying to decide if it's worth investing more in that one right. or if we want constant you know. debate. I know, dude, but I don't know. It's a fun project and you know, I love, you know, just being able to take it out and you, you have your mobile home, you got your camping, you got your storage for all your gear mm -hmm. and uh, we're able to pull two drift, uh, two drift boats, which is awesome, pretty sweet dude. or two rafts. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really well, cool. I'll have to get you involved down the next time. I know, dude. I don't know how to spay. I, I've never done it before. I'm, I'm excited. We'll get, we'll, we'll get we'll get you dialed, man. Yeah. Cuz I saw you you were out fishing recently, right? Yeah. Some fishing? Yeah, I grew I mean I grew up bass fishing, but I mean I it wasn't it wasn't like I put like tons of hours in either, you know. So, but still mm -hmm. coming from the East Coast and bass fishing lakes to coming out here and joining this like giant community of steelhead and salmon anglers, it's crazy. It's like a whole world that I haven't touched into with in like in fly fishing, mm -hmm. but <clears throat> I mean, dude, I think one of the things I love so much about it, and this is probably similar with like rock climbing and surfing is more, you know, fishing is a fun activity mm -hmm. that we get to do. I love, love fly fishing, but it's more like the bigger picture. And it's like the things that you learn and you take away from it, especially with how tedious fly fishing can be and yeah, about, you got to put in a lot of time to be good at anything. Mm -hmm. And, uh, not only, you know, you learn that from fly fishing and you can apply that to everything else. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sure it's like that for you with climbing, surfing, biking and music even, you know, it's yeah. just like the bigger picture. Bigger picture for sure. Yeah, I think fishing has been the biggest lesson on that for sure, you know, because all the other things you just get rewarded with something pretty much every time. Um, just a little bit of joy. I, I, there's tons of joy in fishing, but it's about learning what the reward really is in fishing rather than being like, Oh yeah, I caught a I don't know eighteen pound steelhead. You know, every time you can't do that. You know, 
So mm -hmm. that's been, it's been really, really, it's just been a huge patient game. And I'm sure you guys are super used to that. But if you come yeah. into the sport with, with like a short amount of patience, you're going to lose half your gear and it's going to suck. <laughs> Oh um, yeah, dude. You're going to get frustrated. <laughs> gosh. Yeah. We just, we were in Coos Bay like this past weekend, Kate and I were my partner and, um, we went crabbing and clamming. That was super fun. But then the next, I think we went like surf perch fishing. I don't know if you guys have surf perch out there on the Atlantic. I don't think we do. Yeah. We don't. At least not that I'm familiar with. Mm -hmm. And man, it's like the crazy wave. So you keep putting more ounces on to just like keep your stuff at the bottom. And then you're just chunking out the sled. And of course, you're just snapping your leaders because you're like, man, I've got 20 pound test on, but it's still just coming right off. There's no way because it yeah. just drifts in in like 30 seconds because it's just so gnarly out here in the wintertime with the waves. But yeah, definitely oh, getting yeah. frustrated. And you're like, it's OK. It's fine. You know? <laughs> yeah. But, Dude, yeah. I'm curious how you're able to balance like all these things because you know, music obviously takes, it's very tedious and t can take a lot of time, but you're also, you're any, every time I, you know, go on your Instagram or something, you're, you're doing something badass. You're climbing, you're surfing mm -hmm. or doing something, you know, how do you go about balancing all that? Um, gosh, man, I, I don't know. There's a lot of, there's a lot of negatives. Like one negative was, you know, you guys invite me out to go on this trip and you got to see the, to see the negative side of like doing too many things. You know, mm -hmm. when you're like, got so much going on, it's like, okay, I got to cancel this thing or like, I don't have it in me, you know? So there's lots of moments like that, but I'm just, I'm, I don't know, man. I like to go, 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 go most of the time. So it's like, I get one day off and then it's like, okay, we got to go, got to go to the mountain and do this or, um, I don't know. Just trying to find time to make music is probably the hardest thing, which mm -hmm. it's so ironic because that's like my main gig and I'm always like, oh, I got to find yeah. time to do that. But um, it's easy to get ahead of yourself with just getting out there and doing too many things, but you, there's definitely some fallbacks for sure. So mm -hmm. I don't know, running out of time is one of them. It's good to be busy too. Cause y y you know, when you do have a free time, mm -hmm. you're going to go want to, you're going to want to go do something outside, mm -hmm. and especially where you're like located. You are in the perfect position to, to go. You have the mountains and the coast all in one. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm sure that balance is tough because you're like, I want to, I love making music. And that's, you know, kind of your career. And then, but you've also got all these other things. You're like, oh, I could go do this. Uh -huh. It's probably hard to stay disciplined sometimes. It totally is, man. It totally is. Yeah. Especially without touring too. I've just been at home and you're like, oh, more time to go do these, my addictions, you know, but uh, <laughs> it's good. It's been a good year. It's been a good year to like learn about balance and learn about, okay, I need like, I need a day for myself. Like today it was like yoga, meditation and a podcast and some music writing you know today was like a down day mm -hmm. which was really really good um but then tomorrow we're going like back up to the mountain and so it's a lot a lot going on and uh it's awesome it's really really great but it does it gets super stressful i mean it sounds silly you're like oh they're you're having fun you're doing like weekend activities but it's still it can feel like a job when you've got a get a million things packed in together for this thing. And then the minute you get back, you got to like clean all your gear and organize it and then get all this other gear together and go do this other thing. So, um, I don't know. It's, it's interesting. Only getting better mm -hmm. though. That's what it's about. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about just doing it, man. And uh -huh. learning kind totally. of from there. Dude. But, um, to kind of like transition into to kind of your, your process. Cause I'm, I'm always so curious. I think everyone's got their own unique <clears throat> process for whatever they create whether they're a painter, musician, videographer, or whatever. But I'm curious from, you know, because you have chose kind of such a non-traditional way to do your music, uh, what does kind of your typical process look like? Or does it kind of change uh, for each each project you work on? Um, I think it's generally about the same. Normally, I just kind of find, find some samples online or scents, and then I'll bring them into my Ableton project and kind of tweak them and make them my own and just start to explore. Um, I don't know. I think if you talk to a lot of musicians, they'd just be like, I don't know. I sat down and then I like something happened and then I had a song, you know? So there's not yeah. always like a one way to do things. It's just, oh, well, this I'm not getting anything from the keyboard right now. Let me, let me like pick up the guitar and try that out. And, and then you finally get a lead that you like and then you kind of start to build on top of it. But there's definitely not a, a cookie cutter way to write. Definitely no formula for me at least. So mm -hmm. 
I mean, it probably helps too that you're able to go out, say, take your truck camper and spend a weekend camping and climbing Mm -hmm. and then come back and you might have something, some inspiration that you can just go, you got everything in the car. You can go pick up the guitar, pick up the keyboard, record something. For sure. I definitely get those feelings of of, of, uh, inspiration. I'd say like the one biggest thing that inspires me is my shows. So this has been the hardest year to write music for sure because you get back from Mm -hmm. tour and you've like been filled with all this love and you feel so good about your your art and you want to make more and you know what the crowd likes and what you like to play live and it's just easy to do all of it so it's been hard to do that this year but uh it's good to find different ways to be inspired for sure especially with coming out you know you've had a bunch of songs come out this year i'm sure that is just so hard to you know you want to go perform and uh be with your community you know be with your herd and just unfortunately haven't been able to this year yeah um yeah, it's been a bummer. I know I've missed shows. That's mm-hmm. like the one thing I am looking forward to. Like the first show I go to, when all this, you know, we can go to shows is gonna be nuts. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> At I least know. I hope so. We're all gonna be wearing hazmat suits and respirators. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, what what does your the show look like for you? Because you said you have you guys you have like a group or of a band. Mm-hmm. Um, what does that look like for like the live show? Uh, it's normally like it's normally me with an acoustic guitar, and I've got a drummer that's got in ears, and then I've got a keyboardist that's playing the keys and uh, sort of playing part of the track. So, and then okay. I, yeah, definitely no like lip singing or not playing something. We're we're playing everything, but there's still, you know, we'd have to hire seven musicians to get every, every instrument in the song played. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's sort of like a backing track with extra keys on top, keyboard guitar and drums it's pretty much super simple yeah i was curious because there's so many layers to your songs Mm -hmm. and like with just a three piece you know it's probably hard to you can't get everyone to play um right but yeah i'm dude i'm I'm glad you're saying like there's no like lip syncing or anything yeah i know i don't know there's like rap shows that i've been to in the past and you just it's like they're not it's why am i paying to go to this live show they're hype hype beasts they just thought they're just hiding their hype you up man yeah (laughs) Well, that's that's awesome. I'm I'm super excited to hopefully get to a Goth Babe show in the in the near future. Hey, man, um, we'd love to have you. Yeah. So, dude, do you think kind of having a like limited space in a kind of a small space and limited gear? Do you think that like how does that affect your your recording process and your creative process? And do you think that benefits you at all? Um, I think so. Um. Yeah, I think so. I think it's it, it works for having a tiny home and it works for writing music kind of anywhere. But if you want to get super intricate, you can always go online and just download more packs and whatnot. So you kind of have the best of both worlds nowadays because you don't have to have everything physical. You can always just upload more stuff to your keyboard or whatever. So, um, mm-hmm. But I, yeah, I like having things simple. It's, it's, it's just better for my brain, I think, for sure. I mean, I think as any creator, you're trying to there's so much going on and you can make it overcomplicated, but you're really just trying to dummy it down as much as possible to make it just the most, I don't know, the most simple it can be right. to still get the best product, you know? Right. Definitely, man. Yeah. Drums, bass, guitar, a little bit of keys, maybe the second little bit of keys or synth and vocals. And that's pretty much, that's all I've ever needed. <laughs> yeah. No, well, that's great. I mean, it, for anyone who's, you know, like aspiring to be a musician or, anything it's it's good to see someone who's you know had some had a lot of success and uh with such a simple setup Mm -hmm. and i love that thanks man appreciate that yeah and do some of the people that i talk to video wise you know these you see these incredible videos and you're like you're only using like this camera and you're only using this editing sort like the the i don't know sometimes that's all you need you just need a simple setup i know man yeah what's the what's the vlogger on youtube like casey neistat yeah, Casey. He's, uh, I mean, I when I was looking to get a camera, I was like, oh, let's just see what he uses. It's probably some really expensive camera. And it's like a Canon <laughs> ADD. And I bought one. And it's been great. It's not the most, it's like 800 bucks or something. And for a camera and video camera, that's like nothing. So, and it's been awesome, you know. And he apparently goes through those things like Tic Tacs, he said. But Oh, my gosh. Uh, I, I used to watch his, when he was in New York City doing the, the daily vlogs uh-huh. I used to be into that back in high school, man. And just seeing him like whip around in New York. I was, that's when I was like, I want to go to New York city. Yeah, for sure, <laughs> that man. place is sweet. 
Oh yeah, dude. I was also curious because um, I saw you've been working with Ben Moon a little bit. Mm -hmm. What 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 sort of things are you able to talk about, and how did that relationship start? Because I'm a big fan of Ben Moon. I've I've loved his uh, photography and his story, uh -huh. and um, yeah, just curious to hear about that collaboration. Yeah, I, uh, we're releasing a video soon. Um, I don't know that I can give much. I could probably tell you it's it's through Amazon Music. Um, who's sort of helping us with it, but uh, it's pretty much just me and Ben, and we just made a film together about my life and what I've been through and where I'm at and where I want to be. So that's been the past like three or four months or so, and I've just been driving out to where he lives out in, uh, I shouldn't say where he lives, but he lives out, <laughs> out, on, out on the Oregon coast, and, uh, and we've just been making content together, and it's been really awesome. But yeah, we've definitely got some similar stories. He's got it. A crazy story um mm -hmm. but we both love our animals and surfing and good times and yeah ben's ben's a good dude love that guy mm -hmm. dude and um i think y utilizing video as an artist <clears throat> especially to kind of like brand yourself and tell you just to share your story i think it's such an important tool mm -hmm. and you've done a great job with that um when did you kind of realize or want to start involving you know more video and kind of sharing your story through the video side of things uh i'd say once i got myself into management and got myself into you know making things more professional it was my team was like all right you're, you're doing some pretty visually cool stuff we need to start capturing this, these sort of things and i wouldn't have wanted to capture i'm like well i'll bring a gopro along with me and i'll but they're like no we should we should like <laughs> get some professional work done and, and like make this look good. So yeah, probably two years ago or so, maybe a year and a half ago. So we started the whole media journey and it's been fun. It's cool to be in that and not be like planning out your next TikTok video. You know, it's cool to like, I don't know. <laughs> no offense yeah, I mean, to TikTokers. It's, it's in whole art form itself. You know, you're, you got to think, there's so many variables that go into telling a good story right. and just w capturing certain moments. Right. Um, and I, at the end of the day, it's, you know, I think it's more important to capture like those moments opposed to just footage. You're not just going out right. to shoot footage. You're shooting cool, you know, oh, that's a good looking scenery. I'm gonna get a shot of that. Uh -huh. It's like, you're trying to capture these emotions that, and these moments that are happening throughout whatever you're recording mm -hmm. and then share that through a story in a mm -hmm. video. Oh, dude, I'm excited to see what you and uh, you and Ben are working on. Yeah, it's good. It's really fun. It well, it's it's got some dark dark to it, but it's still really fun. It's a it's a yeah yeah. I feel, it feels like it's been a long time coming to get it, but it's we're so stoked with the product. It's gonna be awesome. Uh, you you're saying that um, that you are working with the management team, but I, I understand you're not like under a label, mm -hmm. right? You're mm -hmm. just you're still an independent artist. Uh -huh. How do you think has that has that been uh, you know, I because I've I've heard good and bad about working with a label or working not with working with a label. What was the going through your mind when you were thinking about doing that and kind of pursuing your music career as a solo artist or an independent artist? I don't. I just think times again have changed so much to where labels, there you're not. You don't necessarily need them, and I think they realize that now. So you can go, you know, you could completely, you could be completely independent for years, or you could go with the label after your first EP or record or what have you. So both can be super positive depending on what, what record, record label you go with. But um, the management team, it's pretty much just, you know, some folks that do emails for me and, and keep me in line and sort of, uh, yeah, help me make content and do that sort of thing rather than just go outside all the time because nothing would ever get done uh but the labels i don't know we've, we've definitely thought about it a few times we've had some offers but i just don't think we're ready for that quite yet so and i think that's mm -hmm. for the better at the moment yeah giving you time to spend you know you want to spend the majority of your time or the most of your time on the mm -hmm. things that you're best you know you're best with which is the music side mm -hmm. and i'm sure the management team has like plays a huge role in for that sure so kind of having some success as like an, uh, an artist, you know, um, have, have, were there any kind of moments or, you know, times during all of this that you kind of were like, 
I don't know if this is what I should be doing. I don't know if this is going to work. Hmm. Should I be kind of like questioning your decision on pursuing music? Um, I mean, before the success, yes, for sure. Um, but I would say recently, no, not at all. Yeah. It's been like, wow, this doesn't feel like, you know, you look at other musicians around you and all they do is, is just music. And, uh, they focus on their social presence. They focus on their media. They they are like constantly writing, and that's like that encompasses their whole life. But I don't think that I don't know. I don't think that that embodies who I am or the way I function. So I just kind of have to continue to remind myself that. But I, it's hard to look at people like that and look at how much how many songs they're producing a week or whatever. And I might produce one every two weeks. So it's like, man, am mm. I really like am I a real musician or am I just writing songs every now and then so but i don't know i think it's cool to to not be not just do one thing and i think it makes it super special so i am a musician yeah i think just do it differently yeah <laughs> dude i love it man and i think that's what makes you unique is you know you've got all these other things that you're doing it's not like like the music is fulfilling but that's not the only thing that's fulfilling you right like you've got all these other things and all these other friends and communities that you're a part of mm -hmm. And uh, that, you know, are going to make you happy either way if music doesn't work right. out or not. Exactly, man. Definitely. And I think it's good to, good to stress that to, you know, to more people. For sure. Um, but dude, uh, you've worked with some, some pretty cool brands I've also seen, which has been really cool. Like collaborations, you know, that I feel like are very genuine and um, kind of represent your brand. For sure. As much as they represent. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about like some of the recent ones you've been doing in you know, kind of how that comes about, like connecting? Uh, normally they reach out or my manager reach, reaches out to them. But um, yeah, like we've been working with United by Blue and uh, uh, Protect Our Winters, I think is a new thing that's coming up. I don't, that's, that might not be entirely announced yet, but we've been sort of working with them a little bit. Um, Project Zero, all just like, you know, amazing companies that are doing lots of conservation and all super positive things. Um, recently I just started working with conservation lands foundation and they pretty much protect our public lands that we're able to go fishing and climbing and hiking at, you know, um, anything that mm -hmm. you go out and you do out, outside generally is on public lands and they're constantly being threatened by oil and gas. And that, that goes for like native lands too. And they just, um, if you haven't watched public trust by Patagonia, you should go do that after this, this podcast, but, um, yeah, I'll have to check it out. They, they definitely, uh, Patagonia sort of leaned on to them as a, as a company to, if you want to give and you want to support, give to them. And so conservation lands, Fa conservation lands foundation and I have been sort of like working together a little bit on future projects and fundraisers and that sort of thing. So yeah, conservation is huge and it should have us, mm -hmm. you know, definitely be more of a focus these days. And it is, it's getting yeah. more, definitely getting more light, which is awesome, but it always needs mm -hmm. an extra push. Yeah. People, you know, it's the conversation is, has been started and people are talking, which is great. Mm -hmm. And I love how, you know, you see, you see bands who work with or artists who work with, you know, like a Coca-Cola or like uh -huh. these one-off brands. I, I think it's cool that you've, you know, you're able to make an impact, not only, you know, on different companies, but like the outdoor industry and just, just conservation in general which again goes back to your brand and um, I think why people are so stoked about goth babe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like full circle. It's like if you, if you put out positivity and the image of positivity and conservation and um, I think all those other things will start to come back your way. So we haven't gotten offers from Coca-Cola and that sort of, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like they don't have much of an interest cause we're not really in their bubble, but uh yeah, I love getting, I love, like, I love the attention from amazing companies because you're like, yes, like we can, now all my fans will just get to see perspective on what public lands mean to them or, you know, what giving 1% back to the ocean looks like or, you know, it's, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, man. And um, has, has, have you seen like, has Spotify kind of been your, your big thing for seeing growth? Mm -hmm. Um, cause I'm curious, you know, I've, I feel like Spotify is kind of killing it in terms of, yeah. you know, marketing certain artists, especially new artists and helping them kind of get off the ground. Was, uh, was that a big 
big role in kind of helping you get off the ground a little bit? Definitely. Yeah. The Spotify playlist, man, it's like, it's like getting on the radio these days, you know? Yeah. I think that what, what happened was I just released sometimes and I got on a pitchfork playlist. Then I got on like an indie playlist and just, you know, once it gets on one, it starts to spread a little bit. So, um, yeah, all the editorial guys over at Spotify, super grateful for them. Um, yeah, Spotify has been such a help to, to bedroom pop artists <laughs> and people who make yeah. music out of their home. You know, it's you couldn't do it without them. I don't feel like I mean, I feel like it's support. It's like supporting a small business or like a small YouTube channel for you sure. Know? And I, I that's the core of like what, you know, you see you see the big names, you see the big companies, you see the big artists. But it starts with those people who are in their bedroom working, right. you know, their ass off trying to make make something out of nothing. Mm. Um and I love that. But what, what did kind of like your growth look like um, as, you know, as an artist? Like, was it pretty gradual or was there ever a moment that kind of, you know, you started to see uh, the trajectory kind of go up a little more? Um, I think it's been pretty steady since sometimes. Um, I mean, I released some music that year before sometimes and it was def- pretty gradual. And then once sometimes happened, it was like, you know, this gradual became something like this. So uh yeah I, I mean once that happened it was definitely upwards and then weekend friend came out and then it was even more and then uh it's just been it's been pretty great man i think every new song that comes out it's an extra push and some of the older songs even like in summer and some of those older older as in like last year eps they you know they their stream levels start to go down over a couple months and then you got a new one so it comes up so it's not like everything mm-hmm. multiplies every time you uh release something but it's definitely like an extra push and you get to new ears and yeah get kind of get back on the map for a couple of weeks and it you go off the map and you come back on it's it's wild how things work on spotify yeah. and social media and i can't keep up with any of it but <laughs> i know man um yeah so sometimes you think it's kind of been the been the big uh Big kicker, though. I think that so. was the first one I heard from you. Yeah, that was awesome. I, yeah, I think just that one probably set it off, and everything else just has, has probably been a little bit of the same. But mm-hmm. so, were at that time, were you were you just like were you touring at all at that point, or were you kind of just releasing music here and there on Spotify? Like, how were you kind of able to market that at at first? Um. I think when that song came out, I just got my pickup camper and I, I was just traveling with my sister going, she came over to, to LA and we, we drove to Salt Lake city to, um, do a little road trip together. And yeah, I mean, I was not playing shows. I hadn't played a show in years. And then a month went by, two months went by and then it was like, Hey, you want to play on the show? And I was like, yeah, sure. So I kind of got the band together and, uh, and then shows have gradually picked up to in 2020 completely drop off. But <laughs> Uh, right oh but yeah yeah the shows are fun man it's a blast where'd you meet the guys in your band um through mutual friends in la one of them is lives in la but the other but i met him in nashville as just an old friend we were just met at a concert somewhere and so i've known him for years but they're just homies they're in other bands too and that you know i just kind of rally up the troops and we'll go out and play a show together so as fun as it gets love it Mm mm-hmm yeah, with the boys in the, in the tour bus or the truck and That's just right. going along, mm-hmm. kind of like closing out here. Um, I'd love to hear kind of some of your like future plans and what you're excited for. Uh, like, mm. what's next for for Gothbed? Gosh, um, releasing this this Ben Moon movie in the next few months is going to be incredible. Um, gosh, what else are we doing? Going to be working with some new companies. Protect our winners is one of them. Uh, hopefully I won't get nice. a slap on the wrist for saying that, but it's that, that kind of new news. Uh, yeah, just I think we're we're gonna be doing a, a Canary Islands music video in the next coming weeks, which is gonna be super exciting. So just putting out more media, you know, rather than playing shows because we we can't. And uh, mm-hmm. I don't know, prepare for the, prepare for the shows whenever they do come, and continue to write music. And um, in my outdoor life, it's catch a freaking steelhead in the next couple of weeks. Those things are, it's like, it's not like fishing. It's like hunting, like you're hunting down this, this elusive creature. So, um, Dude, I know, right? but yeah, just fishing. I'll come back and write music and, um, yeah, 
it's winter time, so you just kind of kind of follow the seasons here and do what it offers. And when it gets sunnier, probably start surfing again. All the good stuff, yeah. man. Have you guys have have you been able to do some snowboarding this this winter? Um, here and there, here and there. Our schedules have we've just been picking to do other things. You know, we decided to go crabbing and clamming this this past weekend, but um, we've been I've been definitely been up a few times. I bought a pass this year too, so I need to go use it, but. Um, yeah, the, you know, it's like, you can't go on the weekends cause you're just going to be a circus up there, but it's snowboarding. So fun. It's a blast. Dude, that's great. And I guess last thing, um, to kind of ask, I'd love to hear from you. A lot of people that, you know, follow us and watch our videos or listen to the podcast, um, are creatives, people who are videographers or even just curious in, uh, in getting into the creative space. Mm -hmm. And I always love to hear from the people who we have on, you know, any advice you have for people who are starting out and maybe are mm -hmm. unsure what to do or unsure how to start, um, just kind of what advice you'd have for someone who's a creative and trying to get into the space uh, going forward this year? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, th I think, I think there's such a, there's such a drive to like create something and you need confirmation or affirmation that it's good and that is normally in the form of like how many numbers it has how many views it has um how many likes on instagram it has and i don't know i think that that is so irrelevant to being a true artist to yourself it's all about just like creating something and being just stoked on what you've created i mean the the, the most stoked i am with my work is not when it's released or when I get to see everyone enjoying it. Normally it's when I just finish it myself, put headphones in and I just like dance in my little house to myself to like a new song. Um, of course, sharing those, those moments with people is awesome too. But um, I guess it'd just be don't get too caught up in, in seeking out affirmation on your work and, and just do you and make what makes you extremely happy. And even if nobody else likes it, as long as you like it, that's all that should matter. So... It's so hard to, Dude, to think that way these days. Everything's about I know. numbers and especially in the world of like quarantine and all that where everyone's focus has been on media and on the screens and um, yeah, I don't know. Getting back out in the real world and just making, making stuff to make it for yourself and maybe sharing that joy with your loved ones or the people in your real mm -hmm. life and not the screens. Yeah, it's tough because that's like what we have right now is like, mm -hmm. you know, can't be around a whole lot of people right now, or maybe right. don't have the opportunity to. So being stuck in, um, you know, I, th I think taking advantage of this time, like you said, this year, mm -hmm. you just, you know, released a bunch of songs, worked on yourself, worked on getting outside more mm -hmm. and just kind of taking advantage of the time we have now. Um, you know, cause we, you know, who knows, we might not ever have a time where we have to be in isolation That's right. and, and be one with our own, you know? Yeah, man. Like this morning did some yoga and meditated. Like I, I can't, hopefully there's more time to do that, but there, mm -hmm. once quarantine's over, I'm sure we'll be like, man, that was, we should have done that more. We should have like focused on self care and, uh, just made stuff just to make it and got off of our phone for, you know, X amount of hours a day, but it's yep. tough. Well, you're in the perfect spot for all of that, man. And we're going to have to, we're going to have to plan a trip here soon. Got to get you on the fly. I know, man. I know. got to learn. Got to get you dialed. Got to get me dialed. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll get you guys a, well, I don't know. Do you guys fish anything else or you just fish fly? I've pretty much just fish fly mm -hmm. like right now. Um, I grew up spin fishing, which, you know, that's kind of like where I started fishing. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, ever since I've started fly fishing, it's been kind of the only, only thing I want to do. Only way I want to target right. fish. Right. Um, you know, and I think, dude, I think you'll, you know, from everything you do, I think it's one of those things that you would love. For sure. You'd catch the bug, so to For say. For sure, yeah. Just another another outdoor activity to get into, man. Know, man. Take your money. <laughs> I know. Got to get the rod. Got to get the reel. Got to get all that stuff. Dang, man. Yeah. Maybe we can do a little. Maybe you can teach us how to surf. And, That'd be uh, great. We'll teach you how to fly fish. Yeah, man. We'll trade off. That sounds ideal. I could show you this the spin setup for the hitting the real deep pockets yes. up here. I think with all this, we get some lots of like glacier water, and it gets super super cold. So they'll just sit real real deep in these pockets, but. Definitely seen a lot of fly fishermen out, um, out here at, at the river that I'm at out here, but yeah, mm -hmm. I got to get on that, man. It's gotta be we'll fun. We'll do it, man. We'll do it for sure. Well, appreciate you coming on. This has been, uh, been a ton of fun. I wish we could do this in person, I know. but obviously we're on, on different sides of the country mm -hmm. right now. 
and uh, maybe we'll be able to do another one of these if we uh, if we make it out your way. Yeah, man. But I appreciate everybody else listening. Um, if you guys have not already, go check out Goth Babe's music. Um, you are gonna love it. Don't don't judge the name. I promise you're gonna love the music. <laughs> no judge the it's, name. <laughs> it's kick ass. <laughs> and uh, yeah, where can where can people find you uh, besides Spotify? Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, um, Title, Amazon, man, anything, anywhere you're looking. The whole deal. Just open up your phone. Go where music happens. Sweet dude. Mm-hmm. Well, again, appreciate it coming on, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Sweet. Thanks for listening, boys and girls. Oh, 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 oh,